Hello and welcome to an introduction to the colorimetry experiment. We have a few pieces here that are important. We have our calorimeter where we can put our cell or put our sample inside a little uh, crucible. Uh, and then we can put our sample here, lead a wire to it. We'll talk about that in a moment. We could connect and place this in here, seal it up. We can fill the cell with oxygen and replace all the air inside the uh, calorimeter with a high pressure of oxygen using our gas cylinders. We can then use our water system to put a reproducible quantity of water inside of our can that's gonna house our calorimeter cell. And we can then connect lead wires to the cell once we put it in our insulated environment and we can then detonate the sample and watch the ensuing uh, temperature change take place. As you can expect, combustion reaction gives off heat. Heat's gonna come out of the calorimeter, go into the water bath, so we should be able to pick up a temperature increase for our water bath throughout the course of the reaction. Okay, so let's begin with a discussion of our sample cell. What we would do is take our crucible. Usually we'd wanna wear gloves. We'd wanna make sure this is good and clean. Uh, rinse it out with water, maybe soap, dry it out, rinse it with some acetone. Uh, wipe it out real good with a chem wipe in between trials. You'll see some soot forms in the inside. We have some pre-made benzoic acid samples. There's also a smaller white bottle. It looks pretty similar. But if uh, we take a, it's not easy for me to do things. It's holding a camera. But if you take a look in here, you see there's some capsules of benzoic acid in terms of pre-made pellets. So that's convenient for adding one of those pellets here. Um, we have a pellet press here if we want to make a pellet of something other than benzoic acid. We'll talk about that in a later video. But in case you're thinking ahead of other samples, we can use the pellet press. Only benzoic acid comes in pre-made pellets for this laboratory. So the process of adding your pellet here, you then need to take some lead wire and you want to take reproducibly 10 centimeters. That's from one edge to the other. So you want to use a pair of scissors, cut one 10 centimeter strip of wire. These little guys here, these little pieces pull up. I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see so clearly, but there's actually, you can see it here. That little hole is where the wire goes through. There's another one on the opposite side. You can usually see the pieces of the wire from the previous experiment left over that you can remove and get rid of. And so then you would feed your wire through and then drape that wire down to the sample. The wire just has to really be just barely above the sample or maybe slightly in contact. One of the keys is that wire has to go, let me use like a little pointer here, that wire has to drape itself to the sample and not touch the sample holder or any other piece of metal or it's gonna ground out the wire and it's not gonna burn like we need it to burn. Okay, so there's a picture in the lab manual handout from the PAR manufacturer showing you want that wire just in contact with the sample and then leading back up to the other side. And then we would take the cell, press down. You should be able to basically get that cell to bottom out and then put the cap on accordingly. So that is basically assembling the cell. I'll pick up from the next video of actually filling the cell with oxygen gas and uh, flushing it out a couple of times.